Hi all, Lee Veris here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. Today I'll be looking at a classic lighting and layers technique for achieving a rainbow color effect in still life photography. This technique harkens back to the early days of digital capture when we had to take three consecutive shots through red, green, and blue filters to get a full color image. If you move the light in between the shots, once the image was assembled, you'd get this interesting rainbow light effect. Let's take a look at how we can accomplish that today. All right, so um, the way we do that is uh, we take three consecutive shots. Now, here I have a subject that is fairly monochromatic. I mean, it's clear glass and it's on a plain background. And in this case, I'm lighting it with a focused flashlight. Uh, and that I'm shining the light straight down onto this, this little uh, glassware. And I'm getting all these sort of interesting reflections and the lights bouncing around. It's kind of cool. So if we take three shots and we just move the light, you know, now I'm coming from um, the right front and, and aiming the light so that it's casting a shadow and the kind of reflections and light is bouncing around through into the background. Uh, and now I come from the, the left front and, and do the same thing. We can assemble all three of these together um, to create the rainbow uh, effect. So let's, let's start with this first one here. And in order to get <laughs> this to be a color, I, I'm going to look at the, the, the channel. So we have we have uh, basically the same image in each one of the channels. So there's the red channel, there's the green channel, and there's the blue channel. They're all pretty much identical. But if we only wanted to see what the, say, the blue channel looked like, we could go back to our layers panel here. And I'm going to place a solid color layer uh, just above this. And, and we'll make it a black layer. Right, so I'll, I'll make this black. Now the whole trick to this technique is um, using advanced blending options. So we get to advanced blending by, by going up to the um, upper right corner in the layers panel. That little hamburger icon gives us these layer options here. So about halfway down we find these blending options and, and these are these go beyond the normal layer blend modes and I'll show you how this works. So we're going to select blending options and then we get this uh, <laughs> sort of counterintuitively, we'll get the layer style dialog. Well, it, we're really not concerned with any of these things, these layer styles, but we are concerned with blending options. And you can see here that we have three channels, red, green, and blue. When they're all three checked, it means blend this layer uh, in whatever mode we have selected up here. And we have opacity and some other options down here. We're really only going to be looking at these three check boxes here, red, green, and blue. So the idea here is if I uncheck the blue channel here, what happens is I'm only covering up the image with black in the red and green channel. So I'm leaving the blue channel visible. And so I see what this image looks like in just the blue channel. Okay, so now the idea is we're going to take these other lighting directions and I'll, I'll use my move tool. Uh, and uh, here's a trick for getting the, these layers to be um, aligned. Uh, if you hold down the shift key, when you grab with a move tool somewhere inside the image, I'm just going to hold the shift key down and then drag up to the other tab here where our blue channel image is. And I'm going to drag down and now let go of my mouse. I'm still holding down the shift key. When I let go of my mouse, it drops the image exactly and centers it. So since they're taken with the same camera locked down on a tripod, each image is in registration. So now this image is in registration over the underlying layers here. 
So with our black layer, we covered up the, uh, the red and the green channel. So with this image, I want to I want to put this image and blend it into either the red or the green channel. So let's let's see how we do that. We're going to we're going to go again to our uh, blending options here. And uh, this time I'm going to uncheck two channels. I'm going to uncheck um, we'll uncheck the red and the blue channel. OK, so what we have now is this image only going into the green channel. Right. So to keep track of this, I'll 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 label this. This is going to be the thing that makes my image blue. And this channel is going into the green. This is just so I can keep track of this. And now I'm going to grab that third image. Do my same thing. Hold down the shift key and use the move tool. Drag it up to that first tab. And then I drag down and let go of the mouse while holding the shift key. Go very, a, a shortcut to get to the blending options is just to double click somewhere in this empty part of this layer. And then I get the blending option. So, so I want to now only put this image into the red channel. So I'm going to uncheck the green and the blue. And there you have my assembled RGB kind of rainbow colored um, image. Because all of these colors are fairly displaced, you know, the, the direction of the light was so radically different, the green and the red and the blue all show up very nicely in different places in the image, and it all blends together. It looks kind of cool. Now, I'm not really sure what I want to do with this image. This is now where the light is coming from the background. It's coming from uh, sort of underneath the image and behind the image. So this is a translucent set and the lights now behind the subject. This is sort of a classic way of photographing uh, glassware. So let's see what kind of trouble we can get into with this this image. So I'm going to drag this up using my trick to hold down the shift key and dragging it up to the tab here, dragging it down. Now it's covering everything up. You know, one simple thing we could do if we didn't want such such strong uh, RGB colors is to reduce the, the opacity of this layer. And we can get some kind of in-between, more pastel-y looking thing. Uh, we can, say, uh, lighten this. Put it in a light and blend mode. There's all kinds of things we could do here. Um, we could put it in a difference mode. Um, so there's, you know, kind of interesting stuff. Now, the other thing we could do, let's go back to our blending options. And, then, and we can just play around with... What happens if we blend this into, say, the green channel? Okay, it's kind of it kind of wipes out the the original green channel, but I can reduce the opacity here, and maybe get you know kind of a different thing going on, or I can we'll put it into the red channel. Same sort of thing. Maybe I'll reduce the opacity. You know, you kind of get the idea how how uh, flexible this this whole thing is. And yeah, let's let's try it in, in just the blue channel. And again, maybe reduce the opacity. Right. So this is a this is a kind of it's it's a really fun thing that kind of technique to play with. Let's take a look at some other examples. So here again, here's my uh, here's another version with um, the red, green, and blue images uh, blended in, and in the in this case, the green and the red is also occupying this space over here. So we get sort of a uh, we get a a blue and red lavender kind of look out of it. Let's let's see what. We just blend in other other blends in the in the channels. Well, you can recreate any kind of color you want just by blending more into more channels or um, using other blend modes. Let's take a look at a few more examples. You know, just you know, placing the the same light in different uh, channels, you can get different color effects.
It's another example. Again, just playing around with which images go into which channels, you can get completely different color effects. Here's another example. This one, moving the light through, I was shining the light through a glass block. And so it was giving me these kind of streaky images here. Here's another one that where I blended two different RGB versions together and masked them and chose the best spots to kind of blend the overall image together. Another example of a, of a still life shot this way. And if you get kind of tricky and use things like the difference blend mode and, and things like that, you can get much more subtle color effects that are very interesting. And this works really well with in-camera multiple exposures. Here, uh, this was done in-camera, and I had the, the camera lens was had a collar. It was a telephoto lens and had one of those collars so that I could rotate the camera right on that lens collar and took three shots. You can kind of see here the, the green, the red, and the blue. It's part they're displaced by rotating the camera in between the multiple exposures and shooting through a red, green, or blue filter in front of the lens. Very flexible technique, and uh, you can see how easy it is to achieve this. All right, well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own creative explorations. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.